What? You divorced Nick? What the hell have you been thinking about? I can't believe this. Are you kidding me right now? This can't be happening. Calm down, mom. Seriously, you're making such a fuss over nothing. What's wrong with divorcing him? I've had enough of that family. Living in that house was a nightmare. My mother-in-law always found ways to torture and insult me. It was unbearable. So I just divorced him and now I'm packing my stuff. I'm asking if you could let me stay in your house. Oh, please. Don't act like it was the end of the world. I can't believe you're making such a big deal out of it. Who knows if they really did all those things to you? Maybe you're just exaggerating and making up excuses for yourself. Exaggerating? Are you kidding me? I wish I was exaggerating. Nick always took his mother's side and supported her in everything. He even resorted to violence and hit me several times. It was a nightmare, mom. I will never forgive them for ruining my beautiful day. Well, I'll never believe you unless I see some proof. You have this stubborn attitude, and I wouldn't be surprised if you fabricated all these things to make yourself look like the victim. Do you think you're some kind of princess living in a castle? Do you believe your in-laws are just your inferior maids who have to obey your every command? <laughs> How ridiculous is that? What? Are you serious? I didn't do anything wrong in that family. I did everything they told me to do, no matter how stupid it was. I became their servant, doing their chores, making their meals. I was nothing but a maid to them. My life was miserable in that cursed house. And despite all that, you still think I'm the one at fault? That's just so heartless of you, mom. Heartless? You're the one who's being dramatic. I'm just trying to bring some reason into this situation. Maybe there were misunderstandings or conflicts, but divorce is a huge step to take. You should have tried to work things out instead of jumping to such extreme measures. It's a shame for Nick to have you as his wife. Work things out? How could I work things out with people who treated me so horribly? I couldn't bear another day in that house. It was toxic, mom. And it's not like I didn't try. I endured so much, hoping things would get better, but it never did. I had to prioritize my own well-being and mental health. You're just a naughty girl who can't think about the consequences of her actions. And don't forget that Nick is your child's father. What's going to happen to your child now? I have thought about all of that, Mom. I didn't make this decision lightly. I considered the impact on our child, and I will do everything in my power to ensure their well-being. Staying in a toxic, abusive environment would have been far worse for them. I had to find the strength to break free. Well, I still think there could have been other solutions. But I can see you're set in your ways. Just remember, life isn't always about you and your happiness. Sometimes, we have to make sacrifices for the sake of our family. Sacrifices? I sacrificed my own happiness for far too long, Mom. It's time for me to prioritize my own well-being and create a healthier environment for myself and my child. I hope one day you'll understand and support me in this decision. Well, I guess never. I'm disappointed in your choices, Rita. I can't believe you could be this ignorant and stubborn. You're my mom. You need to understand me and support me. Isn't that right? What? Understand? What on earth are you talking about? It's all your fault. But instead of saying apologies, you choose to blame everything on me. Your mother? You make me lose a nice and wealthy son-in-law. And know I'm the one who's on the wrong side? It's just absurd. Are you speaking against your mother? Nick is a nice man. He always provides me with nice and beautiful gifts. And he's always trying to treat me well and shows his obedience towards me. Not like you, you pathetic woman. No, you don't have the right to insult me like that. I'm the one to suffer everything and all I got is this. It's such a bad welcome, mom. You're not caring about me at all. All you've ever cared about is yourself. You're afraid that you won't have the chance to receive these fancy presents from Nick after the divorce. That's why you're being so angry at me right now, aren't you? Well, whatever. I don't care. But I want to ask if your house has a spare room. I'm packing stuff out of my ex-husband's house and will come home in about two days. You got the nerve to ask me this question. Do you think that you are still welcomed in the house after doing a terrible thing like that? But mom, don't worry about that. I just want to live there for a couple of days. I'll find a new place to live right after that. It won't be a problem to you, right, Mom? Ugh, you've got some nerve asking me that question. 
after everything you've done, you think you're still welcome in my house? You've caused so much trouble, and now you expect me to just let you stay for a couple of days? That's ridiculous. But mom, please don't worry about it. I just need a temporary place to stay while I sort things out. I'll find a new place to live right after that. It won't be a problem for you, right? I mean, you have a spare room, and it's not like you're using it. How could you? But okay, fine! Since you're my daughter, I'll let you move into the house. But just keep your promise to leave after a couple of days. If you don't, I'll kick you out myself. Got that? Hi, Rita. It's me, your dad. How's it going with your move? Is it okay? Oh, hi, dad. I'm almost finished with the stuff. Maybe I'll come back home in about 30 minutes. Are you waiting for me to come back home, dad? That's so kind of you. Seriously, Rita? What in the world are you blabbering about? Waiting for me? That's supposed to be some kind of joke, right? Well, newsflash, sweetheart. Don't even think for a second that I'll lift a finger to do that thing for you. It's absolutely out of the question. I'm just proposing a simple request, asking you if you could bring home a little something for your dear old dad. Is that too much to ask? Oh, and of course, it would be oh so fabulous if it were a glass of fine wine. I mean, come on, it's a present. It has to be of the utmost finest quality. Don't you agree, my dear daughter? What on earth, dad? Have you completely lost your marbles? I even started to think that maybe, just maybe, you've changed a bit and started to genuinely care about your daughter. Silly me, right? Turns out you're still the same old Larry, spending every waking moment drowning yourself in alcohol and then leaving a trail of mess and chaos behind you. Ugh, talk about a major letdown. How dare you utter such disrespectful words to your own flesh and blood, Rita? Mind your behavior, young lady, or mark my words, I'll make you regret it. I'll make sure you end up homeless without a roof over your head. Can you imagine my dear daughter living like a pathetic beggar, desperately relying on others for food and a place to rest your head? I bet that's not exactly the future you envisioned for yourself, is it? Unbelievable! That's all you could come up with in response to your own daughter? Asking for a gift is what you consider a worthy contribution. It's absolutely preposterous. I can't believe I even had a glimmer of hope that you might have changed, that you might actually care about your own flesh and blood. Silly me for thinking you could rise above your booze-soaked existence. Oh, spare me your incessant whining and constant demands. Do you really think asking for a simple gift is the end of the world? It's like you're on some kind of melodramatic mission to make everything about you. Get down from that high horse of yours and come back to reality, will you? I'm your father for crying out loud. I have my own struggles and problems to deal with. If a drink or two helps me cope, then so be it. It's not like you have all the answers or any right to judge me. So quit with the holier-than-thou attitude and show some respect. Ugh! I'm so tired of your constant nonsense, Dad. All you do is complain and order people around. Can't you say something that actually has meaning? Something that shows you care about someone other than yourself? And here you are, standing there, barking orders at me, instead of actually being here and helping me with the delivery. It's always about what you want, isn't it? Well, newsflash, Dad. The world doesn't revolve around you. How dare you speak to me like that, Rita? I am your father, and I demand respect. Are you ordering me around like your doll? Then I'll tell you what, I ain't your doll, I'm your father. You're delusional. I've done far more for you than you can ever imagine, and this is how you repay me? With disrespect and ingratitude? I've worked my fingers to the bone to provide for this family, and all I ask is a small favor, a simple gesture. But no, you can't be bothered. You're too busy playing the victim and acting like the world owes you something. Well, let me tell you, young lady, life doesn't owe you a thing. Oh, spare me the lecture, Dad. Do you want respect? Well, respect is earned, not demanded. And let me remind you, respect goes both ways. How can I respect someone who only thinks about themselves and their own struggles? 
You talk about all the things you've done for me, but what about being there emotionally? What about showing up when it matters, instead of drowning in alcohol? I need a father, not just someone who knows nothing but ordering and requiring. You ungrateful child. I've sacrificed so much for you, and this is the thanks I get? I don't owe you anything. I've done my duty as a father, and if you can't appreciate that, then maybe you should learn to fend for yourself. You think you know what it's like to struggle. You think you have it all figured out. Well, let me tell you, life isn't a walk in the park. It's tough, and sometimes a drink is the only thing that keeps me going. So don't you dare judge me or pretend like you understand. Oh, and your mom told me about your plan to stay here for a while. Well, you could of course stay here with us, but just prepare yourself by doing the household chores and stuff. It won't be an easy task to do, ha ha ha. However, if you don't do it well, then me and your mom will punish you hard for that. You understand? Hey, Rita. See this for yourself. Ugh. Why couldn't you have shown me this tomorrow morning? I'm exhausted, and your late night antics are the last thing I need. And what on earth did you send me? Oh my god, aren't these my things? Why did you throw away all my stuff like this? I can't understand. What did you do all of this for? Well, it's been three days since you came to our house, but you just do nothing but roaming around like a useless parasite. So I and your dad have made up our mind to throw all of your belongings in the basement. <laughs> this is your new place now. You can live there from now. What? You threw away all my stuff? Are you out of your mind? Why would you do something like that? I can't believe this. This is beyond unfair. Explain yourself, Mom. Oh, please. Cry me a river, Rita. It's been three whole days since you've been here. And what have you done? Nothing. You've just been mooching over us like some useless parasite. And frankly, we're tired of it. So, your dad and I decided that enough is enough. We've made up our minds to banish all your belongings to the basement. Consider it to your new living space from now on. You're welcome. What? Are you serious? You can't just treat me like this. This is outrageous. It's completely unfair to me. I demand an explanation. Unfair? That's rich coming from you. You think it's unfair that we expect you to actually contribute something? You've been taking advantage of our hospitality for far too long, and it's time you face some consequences. I can't believe you're doing this to me. I'm your daughter, Violet. You're supposed to support me, not throw me to the basement like some kind of outcast. Well, Rita, let me break it down for you. We had an agreement, remember? You promised to stay here and actually work for us. But all you've done is laze around and contribute nothing to this household. It's honestly pathetic. And it's not just a shame, it's downright embarrassing. We took you in because you divorced your wealthy husband and refused to obey our demands. So, as a consequence, you can stay right here in the basement. Consider it your new home, away from our lives and all the interruptions you bring. How can you be so heartless, Violet? You're my own flesh and blood. Don't you have any compassion or empathy for what I've been through? I suffered terrible treatment from my in-law family and I had no choice but to come back home. I never imagined I would be welcome with such cruelty and bullying right under my own roof. It's painful, you know? It hurts to be treated this way by the people who are supposed to love and support me. Oh, please, spare me the sub-story, Rita. You expect us to feel sorry for you just because you had a rough time with your in-laws? Well, newsflash, life isn't fair. We all face challenges. But that doesn't give you a free pass to be lazy and refuse to contribute. We took you in out of kindness, and this is how you repay us? By expecting us to cater to your every need and letting you off the hook. No, Rita. That's not how it works. You made your choices, and now you have to face the consequences. I can't believe you're saying this to me. I'm your daughter, Violet. How can you be so cold and heartless? I thought family was supposed to stick together and support each other, especially in times of need. Stick together and support each other? Well, maybe if you had shown some initiative and actually contributed to this household, we would have been more inclined to support you. 
but all you've done is take advantage of our generosity and expect us to cater to your every whim. You don't get a free pass just because you're family, Rita. You have to earn your keep and show some responsibility. So, if you're hurt by the consequences of your actions, maybe it's time for some reflection and growth. This is just so annoying! I can't believe I'm being treated like this by my own family. It's hurtful and unfair. Annoying? Oh, believe me, Rita. I could say the name about your entitled attitude. Life isn't always fair, and sometimes we have to face the consequences of our choices. It's time for you to learn that lesson and start taking responsibility for your own life. I never expected to be treated like this in my own home. It's just... it's just unbearable. Unbearable? Well, maybe if you had thought about the consequences of her actions before divorcing your wealthy husband and refusing to comply with our demands, you wouldn't find yourself in this situation. It's time for you to face reality, Rita, and learn that actions have consequences. Okay, then fine. I'll just pack my stuff again and I'll move out of here. Just see this as the last good thing I can do for you, for this family. Then you will never see me ever again. I swear that. What the heck are you trying to say right now? Yes, I'm going out of here. Out of your sight. It's just a stupid decision for me to come and stay here with you. But I realize it now. That maybe family could be the place that brings me the most painful memories. Oh, please Rita. Don't throw a dramatic tantrum and act like you're doing us a favor by leaving. If you want to pack your stuff and move out, go ahead. Maybe it'll save us all from the annoyance of your presence. Save you from my presence? Well, I never asked for your hospitality in the first place. I made a stupid decision coming here, thinking that family would be a place of comfort and support. But all I found is pain and heartache. Pain and heartache? Spare me the melodrama, Rita. You're the one who brought all this upon yourself. You made choices that led to the consequences you're facing now. So don't blame it on the family or try to make us feel guilty for your own mistakes. Oh, believe me, Violet. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm just stating the truth. This family has brought me nothing but painful memories and disappointment. Maybe it's time for me to let go and find a place where I can truly belong. If that's what you think is best, then go ahead and leave. But don't expect us to beg you to stay or apologize for things that were never our fault. You're responsible for your own happiness, Rita, and it's time for you to take charge of your life. Trust me, Mom. I don't need your permission or approval to take charge of my life. I'm done relying on a family that only knows how to bring me down. I'll find my own path, away from all this toxic family. Pick up your phone, Rita! Right now! Don't you dare keep me waiting any longer. I have something extremely important to discuss with you, and it simply cannot wait. Do you understand? I don't appreciate being ignored like this. It's downright disrespectful. Who are you even? I have no idea who you are. And quite frankly, I don't want to know. Are you some kind of deranged stalker? Is that why you're hounding me like this? It's beyond creepy, you know? I'm starting to feel really unsafe here. Oh, please, spare me the melodrama, Rita. I'm not some kind of deranged stalker. How dare you accuse me of such a thing? I simply have something important to discuss with you, and you're making it unnecessarily difficult. You're the one who's being a nuisance here, not me. Nuisance? Me? Oh, that's rich coming from you, miss. I'm so important that everyone should drop everything for me. I have a life, you know? I can't just drop everything to cater to your whims. And for the record, I don't owe you any explanations. So kindly leave me alone. No, you have to explain everything to me. Explain what? I don't understand on earth what you were talking about. Don't act innocent, I know it all. You're the CEO of a really big company now, right? Why didn't you tell me from the beginning? Why do I have to tell you about that? It's a waste of my time. And you were also the person who gave us a monthly allowance, is that right? And it was not Nick after all? That's unbelievable! And you hid all the facts out of my sight? That's unacceptable! Oh yeah, sure. 
Don't you know that my in-law family went bankrupt a long time ago? And they had to bear a really huge debt. Therefore, Nick asked me to act as him and send you the money. Wow, I have to say, he's such a cowardly man. <laughs> well, to continue the story, their situation was so terrible that they begged me for help. Later on, I agreed to save them if they signed the divorce petition. And they had no way but to agree to my requirements. What a relief. But when I came home and longed for your support, you treated me like dirt. Actually, I shouldn't have come back here and asked for your assistance. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it! You became super rich now! I'm happy for you! And you could come back here and live with us any time you want. There is always room for you, my dear daughter. I'll never come back home anymore. And I want to tell you one more thing. Prepare yourself for this bombshell because it's going to shatter your heart into a million pieces. As I was packing my things to leave your house forever, I stumbled upon a debt bill belonging to your dear husband. It appears that he's drowning in an enormous amount of debt, courtesy of his disastrous hobby. Isn't that just delightful? What? This... this can't be true! I can't believe my ears! How could he keep such a thing from me? This is a betrayal of the highest order. I trusted him and now it seems like everything is falling apart. Oh, he didn't tell you, did he? How amusing! It seems like he's too scared to face the truth and lose his precious reputation in front of you. It's quite the spectacle, really. But here's a little piece of advice, Violet. Don't even think about coming to me and begging for financial assistance because you won't receive a single dime from me. No, no, no. This can't be happening. I can't believe my husband has put us in such a dire situation. How could he be so irresponsible? What are we going to do? Our lives are crumbling before our eyes, and I feel utterly helpless. Well, Mom, welcome to the harsh reality of your husband's poor financial choices. It's time for you to face the consequences of his actions. I won't be your savior in this mess. You and your husband need to deal with it yourselves. Maybe next time, you should pay closer attention to the person you choose to spend your life with. Good luck. Please, Rita. I'm begging you. I don't know where else to turn. Our family is on the verge of ruin, and I can't bear the thought of losing everything we've worked so hard for. I know we've had our differences, but deep down, we used to be friends. Can't you find it in your heart to help us in our time of need? Oh, your desperate pleas tugged at my heartstrings for about a millisecond. But then I remembered all the times you treated me like dirt, like I was nothing more than an inconvenience to you, and I won't forget that. So no, I won't be extending a helping hand. You'll have to find another way to crawl out of the mess your husband created. How could you be so heartless? I never thought our relationship would come to this. I'm truly at rock bottom, and all I wanted was a glimmer of hope. You can't leave your family like this. Sometimes, life teaches us harsh lessons. And family? <laughs> That's so absurd. We're nothing now. Stop calling me that. Anyway, I have work to do now. Gotta go. Goodbye, Mom. Forever! <laughs> After that whole ordeal, let me tell you, I received a ton of calls from Mrs. Violet, practically begging me to come to their rescue and help them out of their financial mess. But you know what? I had made up my mind. I wasn't about to lift a finger or offer any assistance to someone who had treated me so poorly. So I simply blocked all communication from her and her family, shutting them out completely. But as they say, what goes around comes around. It turns out that her husband's debt was no small matter. In fact, it kept piling up day by day, reaching staggering heights. So, what did they do? They had no choice but to resort to desperate measures. They ended up selling off every single piece of property they owned, including their beloved house and all those precious things they once cherished. Can you imagine that? But here's the kicker. Even after selling everything they had, it still wasn't enough to cover the ginormous debt they had accumulated. Talk about a nightmare. So, guess what they did next? They decided to flee the country, leaving everything behind in a desperate attempt to avoid getting caught in the clutches of their creditors. Poof! Just like that, they vanished into thin air. As for where they are now, well, your guess is as good as mine. 
It looks like they've disappeared into the abyss. But you know what? I can't say I'm surprised. It's like karma finally caught up with them, and they got a taste of their own medicine. They played with fire, and they got burned. They thought they could treat people like dirt and expect a helping hand when they needed it most. Well, life has a funny way of teaching us lessons, doesn't it? They got exactly what they deserved.